And so from the cruise line, I called a place we have them made that's not us, that where people may wear oranges for a living. And the lady actually had them done and we overnighted them to Ed. It's still hard to explain to people that you own a license plate company for full-time employment. I mean, we don't have any felonies and we're not walking around in oranges and we don't hire people in with numbers on their back and I don't know my DOC number and it is just impossible to explain you, own, you sell license plates for a living. And there are quite a few of them back here that we helped produce. Alex, the ballet guy, he always comes back and tells some incredible stories so here's an update. We made, we did a story about how we sold plates to Iron Man. And being in this license plate business and learning the fonts and the different things, I never thought we were going to be those, these people. But now Hollywood would come and call us for things. There's a, uh, a show on Paramount Plus called The Mayor of Kingstown or something like that. And they had a prison scene and they needed a bunch of license plates. So they chased us down the internet. And here we are. And we sent them 4,000 state of Michigan license plates. And we're like, oh, okay, this is cool. But then we have 4,000 back. So if you have a scene, you need 4,000 Michigan license plates, please call. We have plenty of them. And then you do all kinds of things that you have to hush hush about and not tell anybody about. When we shot the new Ghostbusters, that movie was shot in 2019, but due to COVID, they didn't release it till last year. And we had to keep our mouth shut that we were the people that put the license plate on the back of the act of one. And we had that plate for months and we couldn't release it to the public and we couldn't tell anybody. But then I was Ed Bullion's co-driver in the musket ball and we're out to go have a big time and I get to drive across the country with one of my friends. And then they released Ghostbusters Afterlife and I had to produce 2,500 Ecto-1 license plates for the premiere. So I had to surrender my seat in Ed's hot rod Hyundai or whatever, Toyota or whatever he drove. Everything's cool and we're riding along and we're just selling license plates for a living. But then Ed will call for a Car Trek license plate. And I'm like, yes, let's do that. And can we do it in this font? Yes, let's do that. Can we have it next week? So here's one of the craziest stories that we've ever had on how we had to get a license plate quickly to our friend Ed Bullion. And we were on the uh, High Seas Rally. I was DJing on a cruise line. And Ed wanted this amazing plate that we had come up with for Glossit and for their SEMA booth. And they're about to just bring the house down with this gorgeous car. And Ed's going to go there and sign plates. You know, if you get an 8x10 of Michael J. Fox signed, hooray. But if you get the out-of-time license plate signed by him, that's pretty cool. So Ed was going to go, hey, man, no, nothing better to give away at SEMA than a license plate. Let's make a Vegas plate. Well, Vin Wickett, it'll be exactly like that. And we had this great older design of this Vegas plate. And I'm like, cool, we can do this. So we pass the design back and forth, proof it, done. I take off and go DJ a cruise line. And Ed goes and probably buys a salvage Lamborghini. And then a month goes by and Ed goes, hey, when are those plates going to show up? And I'm like, do you really realize where I'm at right now? And he's like, no. And I'm standing between two cruise lines in Haiti, and I have the spottiest cell phone service you could ever hear. And I go, when is Seema? He goes, tomorrow. And so from the cruise line, I called a place we have them made that's not us, that where people may wear oranges for a living. And the lady actually had them done. And we overnighted them to Ed. And if you see some of the amazing photos of the cars, those were our tags. And that was one of the scariest moments I've had with almost having to let one of my friends down but we were able to get them there just in time. So there's all kinds of bizarre things that happen in the world of license plates. And still to this day, like I said in the opener, people don't believe we make license plates for a living. You know, as we've expanded, all this started in an apartment that I, I lived in. And now we have seven full-time employees. And as we expanded and my wife took this crazy idea I had and turned it into this business, inventory started growing. At any time, there are millions of our license plates out there on e-commerce websites, and we have to keep these things in stock. When aluminum got scarce and it was tough during COVID, I used to have to drive to Louisiana and load up aluminum rolls and bring them back just to stamp all these things, just to keep enough plates in stock for the demand of, of different movies and things come out. If an actor dies, people will, will 
you know, have this grief moment and go buy something that reminds them of them. And that's why we don't still to this day, we don't have like a rest in peace, Paul Walker plate. We just don't believe in capitalizing on someone's death, but there are tags of ours everywhere. When Dan Aykroyd finally went back to the Joliet Correctional Facility this year, where he picked up his brother, Jake and Elwood Blues, Elwood picked up Jake and it was John Belushi. They had a concert in the, in the courtyard finally. And the Blues Brothers, this time Jim Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, went back to the prison. And the prison called us, believe it or not, to make license plates. I figured the prison would have made their own. But needless to say, we made all of the plates for the Blues Brothers convention, and we also still make their plate from the Bluesmobile. So our plates end up in the weirdest spots. I'll see them drive by at 100 miles an hour and know that they're ours, but they all came out of our goofy little shop in Indiana. So then when you buy a Car Trek plate from Ed, we're honored to make all these things. We come up with these really, really cool designs. And then Rob Pitts, we do his plates. We do Arnie's plates. We do all kinds of different YouTubers' plates because everybody that doesn't allow or doesn't require a plate on the front, you know, legally, have room to put their own. So why not use one of ours? So it's been an awesome ride, and we still plan on uh, expanding and going even bigger and better. But now we're in the Peterson Auto Museum. We're in places we never thought we were going to be. But if you've ever wanted to know if someone can legally make license plates for a living and not work for six cents an hour for the state, we can. Currently in inventory, we have 320 different designs in stock. And they range from movies and television to sci-fi stuff to now we did all of the California plates. So in 1964, the California plate was black. And if you have a 64 Impala and you want a California plate that says 1964, we not only have it, but we have it in the correct color and font. In 69, they changed those to blue, so we changed ours to blue. So if you have a 1969 Dodge Charger, Volkswagen Beetle, anything, you can now get a blue correct California plate from us. And uh, we just didn't like the fact that, you know, if it type in hot rod and it looks terrible, we actually care what the font was and what it looked like, and we like them to not only be screen accurate, but we like them to be BMV and DMV correct. And that's why we don't make plates with slots. And so there's, on any given day, we'll get an email that's weird, and we'll be like, who is this from? When Aaron Paul was on Breaking Bad, Aaron Paul, during the final season of Breaking Bad, would buy his plate from us, which we would have happily sent him, but he would buy his plate from us that says the captain on it, and it says uh, New Mexico plate, but he would sign them, and he would have a scavenger hunt on his Instagram channel and hide them all over Los Angeles. So our plates end up in the weirdest spots. So when Cobra Kai was filmed down here, we did all the plates for the first season of that, the LaRusso Auto plates. Um, and then the second season had a Dodge Challenger that said Cobra Kai on it. The original plate was made by a prop house, but then William Zabka, if you go to his like booth at a Comic-Con, he's got a bunch of Cobra Kai plates that are dead on screen accurate and we're the people that make them. So it's weird that like the actors like Bo Duke, John Schneider will call and say, hey, I need 500 CNH 320 license plates. And like, these are our childhood, my childhood heroes. I'm like, okay, John, I'll be sending you a plate. I'll be like, damn, Bo Duke's on the phone. Like I'm that guy still like, cause I'm a fan, but we're, you know, allowed to make these things that will get us closer to our childhood heroes. And Aykroyd and them bought all, and used a whole bunch of plates for the new Ghostbusters movie. There are movies coming out that we know that we can't talk about that we're making the plates for, but they are semi-trucks that turn into robots. And now that semi-truck has never had a license plate on it for eight movies for some reason. I don't know why he has diplomatic immunity to f drive and fly all over the universe without a license plate, but all of his friends have plates on him. But for the first time, the transforming semi-truck has a license plate on it. So there are movies and things that we'll get calls from, just like the, the mayor of Kingstown when we did all the plates for them. Like I said, we've done all kinds of YouTube plates and all kinds of different plates for people, and we love it. And, you know, when you sway away from doing star cars and celebrity cars and you end up with some other things that are just a little off the wall, we did Sam Hard's plate for the petrolheadism. That was wild. But things that we steer clear from are like political license plates and even vintage political stuff. And then they go, well, Travis, you did the plate from uh, JFK's limousine he was assassinated in. We did, but we sold them all to the Texas Book or Depository and then we sold them to the Historical Auto Society so they would sell them in their gift shop. So we're not going to do a uh, like the presidential limo plate because some 
idiot will buy it off of us and then put it on a black Suburban and it'll go crash through the front doors of the White House and they'll be like, oh, where'd you get the tag from? I'll be like, oh, nothing to see here. There is a vintage picture of Donald Trump getting in his old, long, like 86 Cadillac and he's just coming in through the back door and people have asked us, he sent out some weird tweet a few years ago that said Confefe or something. So they said, will you put Confefe on a presidential license plate? And I'm like, it's a 24 hour news cycle. I'm good on that. But on his plate on that car, all it said was D J T simple New York. And we even passed on that because there's no reason to get involved in political license plates or this, that, and other, because you know, you, you'll never please them all. So there's some things that we steer clear from and Political, generally religious license plates were good, but uh, you know, a lot of other things are fair game. Whether you see the car in person or buy it sight unseen, when you buy a pre-owned car, you need to get an inspection done by a qualified professional. And the nationwide network of trained inspectors from the Lemon Squad is the best way to accomplish that. They give you a great deal and a great bit of information about any car you're looking at very quickly. They've been supporting VinWiki now for two years and I use them personally because when I'm buying a car, I need to know the full story. So check them out now at the link in the description below and use the code VinWiki for 10% off and never buy a used car without the Lemon Squad.